I'm Kehlani, and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. Today, we're talking about video games. Did you know that you can have a career making and even playing video games? That's so cool. In this episode, we'll begin the journey of creating your own video game. Whether you're aiming to design an exciting fantasy quest, a challenging platformer game, or a brain teaser puzzle, Scratch gives you all the tools to make it happen. In our project today, we're going to create a basic maze game. Let's create a game where the player needs to collect items that have been broken apart in order to make something cool. Let's get started. Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Go to scratch.mit.edu. If you already have an account, go ahead and log in. Don't have an account yet? That's okay. Just check out the first episode in the series to learn how. Now I'm going to create a new project. You can do this by clicking on File, then New. Have you ever completed a maze in real life? Maybe you used a piece of paper and pencil from point A to point B. When I think of a maze, I think of a lot of dead ends. I also know that there needs to be at least one path to solve the maze. For our maze game, we're going to use conditionals and sensing blocks. Conditional statements allow the code to make a choice when a certain condition is true in the project. By pairing the if conditional with the sensing block, we'll be able to make something happen when a sprite is touching a certain color or sprite in the project. To do this, let's create a new background image. Hover over the backdrop icon in the bottom right corner. Select Paint from the menu. Take a moment to review all the tools in the paint editor. That'll help us design our maze. To build the walls of our maze, we're going to use the rectangle tool in the bottom left of our tool menu. Let's see how it works. I'd like the walls of the maze to be tall and narrow so that the player sprite can easily navigate around them, but not too narrow because it still needs to be challenging. Once I have the shape of the first wall, I'll click on the cursor icon to use the select tool. This will allow me to select the shape that I've just created. Next, I want to update the colors of the wall. I can use the fill and outline tools to update the colors. I think I'll do a light blue fill color to make the shape stand out. I'm not going to add an outline since I'll be placing many shapes together in the maze and I want the design to look seamless. Now for the fun part, let's continue building the maze design. I'm going to repeat this process to add several different rectangles of varying widths and lengths that the player sprite will have to navigate around. That was fast. Take your time and come back when you're ready. Now, I'm also going to use the rectangle and text tools to create clear start and win tiles in the maze. This will help create clear starting and winning conditions in the project. The last thing I want to do in our maze design is fill in the background color. I'm going to create a rectangle shape in the size of the entire canvas. Wait, I can't see any of the maze walls anymore. Oops. Let's use the front to back tools to send our background fill behind the layer containing our maze walls. Select the background rectangle, then use the back button to relocate it. Now that our maze is designed, it's time to think about what object we want the player to collect pieces of. I'm going to choose a robot, because wouldn't it be so awesome to build your own robot? Click the cat icon and type robot into the search bar. I'm going to use the regular robot for this project. Once the robot is added to your project, click costumes to edit the sprite image. Let's delete the costumes that we don't need, B, C, and D. I'm going to use the Select tool to click on the Puff Cloud. Then we'll click on the Trash Can icon to delete it. Once I've edited the image, I'm going to duplicate the sprite three times so that I have a separate sprite for the robot's head, right arm, left arm, and body. In each sprite, I'm going to edit the sprite costume to only show that certain body part. I can do this by using the Select and Delete tools. Then I'm going to center the image in the canvas and update the name to organize my code. La 
last, I'm going to hide each sprite image so that they don't appear on screen right away. Now that we have our collectible sprites, aka our robot pieces, let's add a player sprite. Click the cat icon again and select any image you'd like from the gallery. I'm going to use Gobo for this project. Drag the player sprite to the beginning of the sprite list for easier access to the code. Then from events, drag a when green flag clicked block into the player sprites editor. Uh, I'm noticing that the Gobo sprite image is very large against my tile map design. I'm going to initialize the sprite size to 100% when the green flag is clicked, then decrease it by 65 to shrink its size. Then I'm going to position Gobo on the starting tile of my maze design and add a go to X, Y block to set Gobo's coordinates to its current position on the screen. The most important part of a maze is that the player can move around the walls to try and reach the end. Let's program the player sprite's movement. Add four when key press blocks to the player sprite. Select one of the four arrow keys in each block, up, down, right, and left. This will make something happen when the user presses each key in the project. When the user presses the up key, the player sprite should move up on the screen. We can update the sprite's Y position to show this. From motion, drag a change Y by block underneath the when arrow key pressed block. Set the parameter value to 10 so that the sprite's Y position increases by 10 every time the up arrow key is pressed. Drag another change Y by block underneath the when down arrow key pressed block. This time, use negative 10 as the parameter value so that the sprite's Y position decreases by 10 each time the down key is pressed. Let's repeat this process for the right and left arrow keys. This time, I'm going to use change X by blocks instead to update the sprite's X position on the screen. When the right arrow key is pressed, the sprite's X position should change by 10. When the left arrow key is pressed, the sprite's X position should change by negative 10. Let's test this out. You can use larger or smaller values to make the sprite move faster or slower with each key press on the screen. Now I'm going to send the player sprite back to the starting position whenever it touches one of the maze walls. From control, drag a forever loop to the bottom of the when green flag clicked chunk of code. The forever loop will run constantly while the project is running forever. Then place an if conditional inside the loop. A conditional statement allows the code to make a choice when a certain condition is true in the project. In this case, we'll use the forever loop paired with an if conditional to reposition the player sprite when it's touching a maze wall anytime the project is running. From the sensing tab, drag a touching color block inside the if condition. Then select the color circle and use the eyedropper tool to select the color of the maze walls. Finally, place another go to X, Y block inside the conditional statement. Use the player sprite's starting coordinates to send the sprite back to the start when it bumps into a maze wall. Let's test this out to make sure it's working properly. Time to scatter the robot parts around the maze. I'm going to add code to the robot head first. Let's add a when green flag clicked block to the robot head sprite. From looks, I'm going to add a show block. Then I'm going to initialize and decrease the robot head size with set size to and change size by blocks. So it looks like it fits inside the maze. Then I'll place the robot head on the maze and add a go to X, Y block to set its position. Now I'm going to make the robot head disappear once the player sprite has collected it. From control, drag out a forever loop and place an if conditional inside. Then from the sensing tab, drag the touching sprite into the if condition. Select the player sprite's name from the dropdown. This will make something happen when the player sprite overlaps with one of the collectible sprites. Then drag a hide block inside the conditional statement to make the sprite magically disappear once it's been collected. Move the player sprite to the collectible sprite to test out the code. Abracadabra! It's not magic though. 
better. It's code. Remember our super cool coding backpack we learned about in the last episode? You can use that code backpack to drag the entire chunk of code to each sprite's editor, then update the X and Y position values for each sprite. I'm going to use the backpack to copy the code we just added to the robot head to use the three other robot part sprites, two arms and the body. Thanks, backpack! Now I need to update a few things on the other three sprites. I'm going to update the sizing to make sure that it appears correctly. Then I'm going to reposition the new sprite and replace the go to XY block with its updated coordinates. Now it's time to make something happen once the player sprite reaches the end of the maze. Let's program a win condition. Go back to the player sprite's code and drag another if condition into the forever loop. Place a touching color block from the sensing into the if condition. This time use the eyedropper tool to select the color of the wind tile from the maze design. From events, drag a broadcast block into the conditional statement and create a new message called win. This will send a secret message once the player sprite has reached the end of the maze. Let's add a new sprite to make the full robot appear at the end of the project. Click the sprite icon and select the full robot sprite or whichever sprite you use as your collectible. Notice that the sprite image has several costumes in it by default. We'll use these images to animate the sprite on screen. Return to the editor and drag when green flag clicked and when I receive blocks into the full robot sprite's code. Let's make the full robot hide when the project starts and show when I receive the win broadcast message. Use say blocks at the beginning and end of the project to tell the user what to do and then thank the player sprite for collecting all the parts. Underneath the when I receive win block, add another forever loop. Place a wait 0.5 seconds block from control and a next costume block from looks inside the loop. Now the full robot will animate every 0.5 seconds whenever the win message is received. The last thing we need to do is add directions and a closing message. I'm going to see if I can move Gobo around the maze to put their robot friend back together. Let's take a moment to celebrate everything we've accomplished today. We use event blocks to trigger actions in our projects, like broadcasting a message when the game ends. We use motion blocks to set and update a sprite's position, making them move just the way we wanted. We use looks blocks to show or hide sprites, change their size, and even make them talk. And finally, we use control blocks with sensing blocks to make things happen under specific conditions, like when one sprite touches another. To save the project, click File in the top left corner, then select Save Now. Once your project is saved, let's share it with the Scratch community. If you haven't done so already, be sure to give your project a descriptive title, then click the Share button to the right of the title. Once we've saved and shared our project, let's view the project page to add the instructions, notes, and credit sections. In the instructions section, I'll add directions to tell the user how to play this interactive game. In the credits section, I want to thank anyone who helped me create this project and give credit to any sources I used. Check out the link below to view the code for today's project. Remix it and have fun making it yours! I hope you had a blast making our maze game together! Now I think it's time for me to go on a different kind of hunt. Whew, to find a snack! Thanks for coding along with me today! See you next time! I'm gonna go eat.